Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of DJ's Fit Down Football Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Gay, of course, here today with Aaron Freeman. He is the host of the Locked On Falcons Podcast. Aaron, thank you for coming on today to talk some Falcons football with us. Always enjoy coming on here, man. Yep, so uh, as we all are aware, the, the Falcons have made a quarterback change, um, benching Marcus Mariota. And going to Desmond Ritter now, the rookie. So uh, let me get your thoughts on that, man. And, it, you know, is it – should they have done it? Or, you know, is it uh, too late? Or what's the whole deal with that? What are your thoughts on it? Well, I, I think you can certainly make a, a very strong case that they did it too late. Uh, certainly I made that case many times on Lockdown Falcons that probably after that Week 10 loss to the Panthers was probably the time to make the switch at that point in time. But I think the Falcons wanted – to give Mariota a couple more chances to show that he could, you know, get this passing game to the next level. Cause that's really been the reasoning behind it where after the Falcons lost to the Bengals in week seven and got behind in that game early and, and really had no answer to climb out of it. Um, it's been really about, okay, if this team is legitimately going to make a playoff run and at that point in time in the season, particularly the next week when they beat the Panthers the first time, you know, they were four and four atop the NFC South. And we were all sitting here thinking like, okay, they, they could legitimately make a, a real playoff run at this point in the season. But in order to do that, we needed to see this offense grow from the one dimensional run heavy offense to, you know, a balanced one that can at least, you know, not always consistently be effective passing the football, but you know, do it from time to time when they needed to be able to do it in order uh, to win some football games. And that really sort of pushed them to the next evolution. And unfortunately, Marcus Mariota just never was able to get them there. And they're hoping that maybe Desmond Ritter can get them. Them Obviously, you know, sitting where they are in the division, everybody assumes the Bucks will take care of business and, and win the division ultimately. And that may wind up proving true because it'll probably come down to that week 18 game uh, between the Falcons and Bucks to kind of decide who's going to win this division. Uh, but it's really still anybody's race. And so I think the Falcons are looking for a spark. And I think Desmond Ritter has the potential to provide that. Yeah. Marcus Mariota, uh, to this point in the season, finished with 2,219 yards, 15 touchdowns, nine interceptions. Uh, you know, and I think, uh, you know, when the Falcons signed him to that deal uh, in the offseason uh, last year, that you know, we weren't expecting anything spectacular um, from him, given his capabilities and what he can do. Um, but we know he provides the something that you know Matt Ryan previously didn't, and that's the ability to escape with his legs. Um, and so, and we saw that glimpses of that this year. And he actually, I think, had the most rushing yards of his career um, this season with the Falcons. So um, it's it's been great, you know, watching him able to get out the pocket and make those plays with his legs, get those first downs, get some touchdowns. But overall, just the passing mechanics just haven't been there for Marcus Mariota, something I've noticed. And, you know, uh, it's just – so to this point in the season, how would you – do you think the Falcons have, have grown, you know, specifically offensively, defensively? I know what, what strides have they made so far from year one to year two under uh, Coach Smith at, to this point in the season? Well, I was looking at the numbers defensively, looking at sort of the six main categories that I try to look at to judge defensive play. And this comes from the Pete Carroll tree. So this was this was something that the Falcons did when Dan Quinn was here. And so I, I sort of carried it over. And you look at sort of the six main areas that you want to be effective at defensively. You know, you want to stop the run. You want to be able to affect the quarterback with your pass rush. You want to get off the field on third downs. You want to get stops in the red zone. You want to create turnovers. So give get big plays for your defense, and you don't want to give up big plays to the opposing offense. And the Falcons have made very, very, very minor improvements in like four out of those six categories, but not enough to really feel like they've made huge strides as a defense. So they're kind of just kind of treading water defensively. I think the, the two spots where – They've gotten worse this year. They've given up more big plays this year, and they've been worse against the run than they were a year ago. Um, but everywhere else, they've been slightly improved. So ultimately, it kind of balances out the defense is like maybe slightly better than it was a year ago. So that hasn't made as much progress as I think we wanted to see. But, um, you know, I didn't have high expectations going into the season. So 
I'm, I'm not going to worry too much about the defensive struggles. And they've been better as of late, although probably some of that is owed to the fact that they haven't been playing elite quarterbacks that have been able to sort of pick them apart like we saw Joe Burrow do earlier in the season or, or Matt Stafford do at the beginning of the season. Um, offensively, they've kind of just kind of stagnated these last couple of weeks. And I think, again, that goes to um, the lack of, of progress they've made in season. But I think when you look at the season as a whole, offensively compared to the first year under Arthur Smith, they've made significant improvement uh, from year one to year two. So, you know, while we haven't had the in-season improvement that we wanted to see with that more balanced passing attack, we have mostly been, when you look at certain metrics, their passing game has been mostly the same, um, from year one to year two, going from Matt Ryan and Marcus Mariota. Now, granted, last year's team was much more throwing the ball a lot more than this year's team is. So it, it's different when you measure Matt Ryan versus Marcus Mariota because they're being asked to do different things. But overall, when you look at the Falcons passing game, it's basically the same as it was. But the real big improvement that they've made from year one to year two was they were like a bottom three rushing team last year. And this year, they're like a top five rushing team. And they were able to do that without overhauling their offensive line, without really, you know, making major upgrades to their running back room, um, you know, making a couple of changes here or there. But nothing that you would sit there and look at this year's group of players uh, and say, oh, yeah, these this group is so much better than last year's group of players. And so I think that's owed to just the coaching getting – this year's group of players that mo many of whom were here last year playing much better football uh, in their second season compared to uh, previous years. So um, I feel like the offense is making big strides and especially if they can get better, more reliable quarterback play, if you can continue to get high level uh, rushing uh, attack moving forward, then you're going to see this offense potentially become one of the better offenses in the NFL being more of that balanced unit. So I think, you know, I won't say the sky's the limit quite for the offense, but like they have the potential to be, you know, a top 10 sort of unit moving forward if they can get better quarterback play. And, you know, the defense is still very much a work in progress, but I think because of the cap spaces the Falcons are going to get, they'll focus a lot this off season on, on trying to upgrade that in a hurry with a, by spending a, a whole bunch of money uh, this coming March when free agency hits. Yeah, definitely. And like you said, the offense, it, you know, just those minor improvements. Again, the, but the big thing that I want to address is that, you know, they made a huge jump in the running game from last year to this year. You know, I mean, like you said, top five rushing offense, Cordero Patterson, Tyler Algier, um, you know, and Caleb Huntley, those guys really been the main – uh, running backs there, so um, I mean, they they they've tremendously helped the offensive running game, and so yeah, I, I really do um, give credit the offensive coaching staff, Coach Smith, to that. You know, just developing those guys and being able to run the football because in this league, you you have to have a good running game, um, you know, to help balance out that passing attack. So um, yeah, that's a big thing. But so moving on uh, again, back to Desmond Ritter as he's now a starter. So. Um, what what are specifically are some things that you know um, besides the fact that he's a rookie he might just make the fans happy uh, when he comes in um, what are some things that uh, Desmond Ritter specifically can bring to this offense that you're looking forward to seeing yeah I think the main thing and it goes back to how Ritter performed in the preseason is getting the timing and rhythm down in the offense that he looked very natural operating um, this offense in the preseason and you you didn't see a player that was you know one of the things that happens when you have a young inexperienced quarterbacks is it usually takes him some time to process things and, and to sort of see and read coverages and, and see and match with the speed of the game and that wasn't an issue for Desmond Ritter in the preseason granted you know he's going up against third stringers and whatnot but um, you know I think mentally he's far advanced to where you typically see young quarterbacks at this point in the season. That's something that Arthur Smith has harped on um, throughout this entire process, going back to the summer, talking about, you know, where mentally he is. And 
you know, I think that translated very effectively in the preseason to him being able to operate this offense and looking natural this offense with their high usage of play action passing and a lot of the sort of dig and crossing routes that they love to run. He was operating those at a really high level, throwing with anticipation. Something, you know, when you compare it to Marcus Mariota, you've never really seen Mariota do at a high level in this offense. You've seen glimpses of it here or there, but not consistently. And I think because of that, that's one of the reasons why you can be optimistic that Desmond Ritter has the potential to be able to operate this offense at a much more efficient level and higher clip than what we saw under Marcus Mariota. Um, one of the other things that I think Ritter can potentially bring to the table is his ability to hit some of the deep balls, right? Like Mariota was one of the worst deep ball throwers in the league this year. Um, and, you know, Ritter just, the bar kind of is so low that Ritter just has to be average at throwing deep passes and it would be a massive upgrade to what the Falcons are currently getting. And you couple that with their running game and team's tendencies to sort of stack the box that if you can unlock that, you know, that vertical passing game, you can basically take advantage of when teams, you know, decide to stack the box, you can hit them over the top with some of those explosive plays. And that's going to bring about that balance that we're talking about with the passing game, being able to, to match uh, the, the running game, um, as well as if teams actually fear your deep ball uh, somewhat, then that means that they're going to lighten the box and therefore your running game should be even more effective moving forward. So that's something that I think Ritter has the potential to do. He was not a elite, you know, deep ball thrower when he was at Cincinnati, but again, he just kind of has to be league average. And I think he's more than capable of, of being that. The other thing I, I, um, I wrote about this uh, this week at the Falcoholic.com, which is, you know, third downs, I think are going to be important. The Falcons were one of the worst third down teams in the league under Marcus Mariota. Uh, and especially these last five or so weeks, uh, they, they were the, like looking at certain metrics on third and fourth down, they were the worst team in the league passing the ball on, on those situations. Um, and so again, the bar is pretty low in that regard to what Ritter can do in order to elevate that group. But one of the things I thought was impressive about Ritter when you go back to the preseason is in his first preseason game, he really struggled, you know, on third downs. He was like, I think the Falcons converted like maybe one of seven third downs in that game when he was throwing the football. But then you get to the third preseason game and the Falcons were like five of seven converting third downs. And that type of growth that you can see just over two or three games in the summer, um, you know, gives you confidence that even if Ritter doesn't necessarily hit the ground running this weekend against the Saints, you know, the growth that he can show over the next couple of games as we potentially build to, you know, that week 18 game against the Bucks. Uh, is something that you can be optimistic about that with reps that Desmond Ritter can improve in in some of the key areas that the Falcons are looking to improve upon. So I think those are kind of the areas where you're hopeful that Desmond Ritter can show that he's an upgrade over. And if that's the case, then again, you may not get you know a top 10 or anything like that passing attack right out of the way, but it is something that you can build off of in the future. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, and just his... Desmond is a guy. I think he, you know, he's got great composure. He's he's very poised uh, quarterback. He was that way when he's at in Cincinnati, and so you know, and that's one thing like you mentioned, um, Coach Smith, just talking his 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 mental speed. You know, um, like because a lot of rookies aren't they they don't you know they're not up to that to that mental speed. You know, um, as far as in the NFL and translating, and I feel like Desmond is a guy that he's he just he gets things quick. Um, so that's going to be key. So um, now. Moving to the Saints game this weekend uh, against New Orleans, it's a big game um, for for both teams. Uh, so, what what's going to be key for the Falcons to get this win here um, going to New Orleans? Yeah, I think the key is going to be their ability to protect Desmond Ritter. Um, I, I think if they can give him time to throw, you know, he'll be fine and he'll be able to you know, do the things that they need him to do from a passing standpoint in order to win the game. We've seen this Falcons team run the ball pretty much effectively every single week. So I, I don't think that is a major concern. Um, you know, the, there have been times where, it you know, teams have been able to stop them and slow their running attack. You saw that early in that Steelers game 
where they kind of slowed down things. And that was one of the reasons why the Falcons got off to such a slow start. But it is one of those things where I think eventually the Falcons running game will get going, even if it gets off to a slow start. But bringing something beyond the running game, I think, is going to be important when we, you know, when we're talking about, you know, the conversation about can you bring more balance? Can you evolve your offense beyond just being this one dimensional run heavy team? Can you bring something else? And I think if you can protect Ritter and give him time to throw, um, you know, I, I think he'll be able to, to to find his weapons. But if he's under pressure constantly in this game, that's going to be a major concern for you. Now, the thing I think the Falcons have going for them is if you go back to that week one game, the Saints were not very effective at pressuring the quarterback in that game. And that was a big reason why the Falcons were able to get that early lead. Unfortunately, for all of us, the Falcons weren't able to retain that lead. Um, so often it seems to happen. Um, but I think if, if you can have a repeat success of that, um, you should see this Falcons offense play much better than it has in recent weeks, even against a good defense like the Saints. And, you know, I, I think like all the Falcon games we've seen this year, with the exception of that Bengals game, it'll probably come down to the final possession and I feel at least a, a lot better um, about Desmond Ritter versus Andy Dalton in this game. If it comes down to, you know, sort of one guy winning the game on, on a game-winning drive, that was kind of the issue with Marcus Mariota. It was very rarely this season have I felt like the Falcons had the quarterback advantage in the fourth quarter. And again, it's Desmond Ritter's first start. So, you know, who knows if, if he's going to live up to that. You know, history kind of tells us that it, it, it's not a, a great success rate when it comes to rookie quarterbacks making their first start, especially on the road against a division rival that knows you real well in a hostile environment. So, you know, all all the, the chips are kind of stacked against them in, in that regard. But, you know, whether it's just being overly optimistic and naively optimistic uh, uh, about what he can bring, I do feel like the certainly the potential is there that we have the quarterback advantage with Desmond Ritter. And so... If that is the case, and, and the Falcons can protect them, I, I do think you know they they can find a way to win. Yeah, yeah, and this um, this Saint defense, uh, it, it's been you know it's been kind of spotty this year, uh, you know, but they're still they're still got some talented guys on that side of the football. So like I said, it's going to be key to protecting the quarterback, uh, making sure Desmond Ritter has time. And I'll say this: the Falcons' offensive line compared to last season has played a lot better. Um, as far as their pass protection, you know, and so it's, it's continuing to see that involvement. Um, or improvement of them, rather, it's been really good to watch. So um, now, defensively, again, you mentioned Andy Dalton and that Saints offense. Now, the last time we saw New Orleans, it was Jameis Winston back there, um, you know. And so what's the difference here with Andy Dalton? And what is the defense? I mean, what do they need to do to, to kind of keep that same offense? So it's been okay. You know, they've been able to drive the football down the field the last couple weeks, you know, um, get some points. What's, what do they need to do to, uh, to make sure that they, that doesn't happen? Yeah, I think the thing that you have going for you facing Andy Dalton versus Jameis Winston is Jameis is, is you know, we, we talk about the, the Mariota coaster here in Atlanta. Jameis is his own type of roller coaster in New Orleans. But like, when Jameis is on, he's he's very good. Like, uh, and, and unfortunately, he tends to be on against the Falcons throughout his career. Um, and you go back to that week one game, you know, he kind of struggled the first three quarters and then flipped the switch in the fourth quarter and was just basically money from that point on. And the Falcons really had no answer for him. Um, part of that is owed to the fact that the Falcons stopped getting pressure after the first three quarters. Um, and so, you know, their ability to get pressure is, is going to be important because you don't want Andy Dalton just sort of being able to sit back there and pick apart the defense. But I think the main difference is like Andy Dalton's highs and lows are just pretty like he's pretty even keeled. He's more of a, a dink dunk sort of guy. Like you're not going to get, you know, the big time 30, 40 yard throws down the field, or at least you shouldn't. If, if he's picking apart your defense like that, you know, something is very wrong. And, and, and we, we may find out on Sunday that something is very wrong with the Falcons defense, uh, in, in knowing our luck. But, um, you know, that's not something you can really expect. So I think Andy Dalton's skill set kind of plays into the style of play that the Falcons like to play. They like to be this sort of bend but don't break defense. So, you know, you, you'll probably see Andy Dalton string together a couple of successful 8, 10, 12 play drives. But 
when push comes to shove, you know, when, when they get into the red zone, they may be settling for three points as opposed to seven points. And if the Falcons in, in turn can get seven points rather than three points on their, you know, red zone drives, that should be their formula for ultimately winning that game. But it, as always, it's going to be a nail biter down to the last drive as, as those types of games are. So um, I, I don't think you have to be worried as much about the big play with Andy Dalton, which I think bodes well for the Falcons, given what we talked about earlier with, you know, their, their ability to stop the big play has declined this year. Um, other than that, you know, I know Alvin Kamara has been dealing with some injury stuff. Um, and so even if he play, I don't know if he's set to play this week, but um, it has not been effective the last couple of games that he has played. So, like, when I look at this Saints offense, you don't have to worry about Michael Thomas, who, who really gave A.J. Terrell problems in that week one game since he's out for the season. It's basically, like, if you can stop Chris Olave, you know, I, I think you can do pretty much what you want defensively, although, you know, that those words have never been said about a Falcons defense. So, uh, but, like, it, theoretically, let's say, you know, in a world where the Falcons have a, a good defense um, or a competent defense, you know, if, if they can prevent Chris Olave from going off and having this monster game, which I, I feel confident, much more confident about A.J. Terrell's ability to match up with Chris Olave than I do about Michael Thomas, because we know, historically speaking, Terrell tends to struggle more with bigger receivers like Thomas than he does to those quicker guys. Like, you know, I won't say that he shut down Stephon Diggs in that Bills game, but, you know, he pretty much had Stephon Diggs contained in that game, and Diggs is arguably one of the best receivers in the league. Um so I feel much better about Terrell going up against Olave than I do Terrell versus Thomas. So, uh, yeah, basically, if I can get pressure, if A.J. Terrell can and keep Chris Olave contained, um, you know, and, and not give up any big plays, and you know, I, I think this is a formula for success against this specific incarnation of the Saints. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be interesting to watch that uh, matchup there. Um, and so... Yeah, man, like I say, we're at a point, the Falcons are five and eight, you know, um, still in the hunt for the playoffs. Like, I mean, just, it, it, you can't believe it, right? Because just this division has been very bad this year. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's going to be key to get this win here against New Orleans. So that's going to be big. Um, so, but before we get off here, man, um, who are just so far to this point in the year, some guys that have uh, really stood out to you on this team that have made improvements, um, you know, maybe – from last year or new guys that have stepped in to this year or new to the team that you've seen, that you've noticed. Um, so that stood out to you. Yeah, I think, you know, you start with new guys. Their, their 2022 draft class has, has been impressive. You, you've gotten, uh, obviously, contributions from Drake London, um, and you're hoping you'll get more with, with Ritter down the stretch. Uh, Arnold Abichetti has shown growth from, from week one to this point and should be back healthy this week against the Saints. So he'll be a key part of getting pressure on the quarterback. You've seen Troy Anderson and Tyler Algier and, and several other rookies. And, and now obviously Desmond Ritter, you're hoping to get contributions from him. Uh, so I think the, the 2022 draft class looks so far like a, a fairly early success. I love the improvements that several players from last year's draft class made where you didn't really get any contributions outside of Kyle Pitts last year. Unfortunately, we didn't see the growth from Kyle Pitts that we were all hoping for in year two, but pretty much everybody else, with the exception of their third round pick, Jalen Mayfield, uh, has made a big jump from year one to year two. Richie Grant, Drew Dahlman, you know, Darren Hall has been up and down, but certainly better than he was a year ago. Taquan Graham, I know he's out for the season, but he was really solid for this team, um, you know, earlier in the year. Um, and then you look at some of the other players, like a player that quietly um, does not get a lot of credit for why the Falcons are such a good running team is Parker Hesse. And a year ago, he was just like this former defensive end converted to tight end that was kind of a practice squad guy. He got a couple of, uh, got in a couple of games late in the season and was effective in limited time. But you, you kind of wondered, okay, he's like, is, is this guy really going to be a, a capable number two uh, blocking tight end? And he's been outstanding this year. And a big reason why this running game to me has, has taken off uh, in that regard. So he's he's sort of quietly, you know, one of those guys that you can make a case for as one of the most improved players on the roster. I'm trying to think who else has made a big jump. 
Those are, you know, obviously the offensive line, you, you've seen several players, you know, Jake Matthews is having, I wouldn't say a career year, but certainly he, his run blocking has been better than it has been for several years um, after being kind of atrocious last year, which is a contributing factor to, to why the Falcons running game was so poor. Uh, Elijah Wilkinson has stepped in nicely as a, as a nice free agent pickup. Again, Drew Dahlman at year two jump. Chris Lindstrom is probably the, the Falcon player most deserving of, of going to the Pro Bowl this year. He's been one of the best guards in the league. Um, and his run blocking has been outstanding. Caleb McGarry, uh, another guy that, you know, you know, I frequently defended uh, on Lockdown Falcons. Yeah. But, um, you know, never with my full heart. Uh, did I did it, you know like it was I was like hey, he's not as bad as other players on their offensive line like you know like he gets more grief than he deserves but like he's not good and like this year he's been legitimately good every challenge that he's been thrown at him that you were like okay well this is the week where Caleb McGarry you know comes back down to earth he hasn't yet to come back down to earth and, and you saw that last week against T.J. Watt which I really thought was going to be the game that he came back down to earth now that I say that I, I probably put a bad vibes in the air and the karma is going to have Cameron Hayward, uh, Cameron Jordan, uh, you know, do it. But, you know, if he can hold his own against Cam Jordan, then I feel pretty good uh, about, you know, how he finishes the rest of the season. So he, he's been another guy. So those are some of the names that immediately jump out to me uh, in terms of guys that said, Cordero Patterson, I got to give him love because I was expecting him to regress this year after, you know, an outstanding uh, 2021 and, and, you know, being a Pro Bowl caliber player last year. Um, and he hasn't, you know, he dealt with some injuries, but he's been just as good, if not better, uh, as a as a running back. Unfortunately, we haven't gotten nearly as involved in the passing game as we would like to. And hopefully, again, that's another thing that we see change under Desmond Ritter. Yeah, definitely. And I think another guy I could throw in there is um, Richard Grant. Um, he's a guy that, you know, he didn't play that much uh, last year. I guess, you know, a lot of that had to do with, you know, him not really fully understanding uh, the defense yet, and you know them being Dean Pease's first year is, is DC, but this year I think he's made great strides. Watching him on the field, great tackler. He's he's intelligent. He's you know he's made some good plays. So that's a good, another guy I'll give some um, some credit to as far as his improvement. So him and Hawkins, hopefully they they will form a uh, well you know a competent safety duo for <laughs> this Falcons defense. Um, so. But uh, Aaron, I, we appreciate you coming on the podcast, talking some Falcons football with us. Again, that matchup against New Orleans will be on Sunday, 1 o'clock at Superdome. So, big game. That's Ritter's first start. So, you know, we'll see what happens there. Um, but, yeah, thanks for coming on, man. Really appreciate you having me, Jay. Of course, man. Um, so, you guys can catch Aaron Freeman's Locked On Falcons podcast wherever you get your favorite podcasts. Check him out. He's got some great content there. Um, and make sure you guys check us out here on YouTube, Spotify, wherever you get your favorite podcasts. That's where we're at. So uh, thank you guys for watching.